I know that Mr Peters and also New Zealand First and the Green Party are committed to working together with the Labour Party to come up with a position for this government. All of you know it is the reality of MMP that in order to pass legislation, if that's what ends up being uh, the case here, we have to get the votes to do that. That's the process we're working through now and I can say that the early discussions that I've had with Mr Peters and New Zealand First is that they are engaging very constructively. Would you consider just looking at the minority report recommendations around the residential rental properties, just going with that, if that got Winston Peters across the line? Well, you're getting way ahead of yourself. I mean, all of those recommendations are there. I think it's probably worth looking at that the other way around, which is that the entire working group of 11 people have agreed to that proposal that um, be extended to residential rental. That's an interesting recommendation and one that we can take a look at, but we're well and truly in early days of looking at the full suite of packages in the report. At first glance, um, looking at farming, that may be one of the sticking points when you're trying to negotiate and getting everyone's support. What is your initial take on that? Uh, I, no, I don't have a particular initial take on that. As, as I say, there are a range of packages here and I think it's really important to understand we set out uh, when we set the group up and ask the group to look at that so taking one bit out in isolation from another um, doesn't probably give us the best framework for analysis at this time we've got principles that we're applying here which is about how do we create the fairest and most balanced possible tax system and we'll look at the components of the packages in that light. You're you talking about there are there are some people. elements of this which are highly unlikely you said highly unlikely to, to uh, take all the recommendations, so that must mean that some are highly unlikely to be implemented already. Where, well, where are those areas? No, I just think the point that we're making there is given the breadth of the recommendations that are here, it is unlikely that all of them will be able to be implemented. Um, I'm not picking out a specific part of that at this point. It's just clear when you've got a report of this nature that covers this much ground, um, it's, unli it's unlikely that will happen. Well, many of the recommendations in the environmental section are contra uh, contradictory to the coalition agreement um, or to government policy. Is it, would it be your intention to get any legislation in relating to the taxation of water or the taxation of nitrate inputs in this term of government? No, and because that's not actually what the group's recommending either. The group's recommending that we look into those issues. When it comes to the question of taxation on water, as you note, Richard, the coalition agreement rules that out. What I think the section on uh, environmental taxation does is provide some interesting insight into the way you might make decisions in the future about those issues. It also raises other issues that are already on the work program of the government, such as looking at the waste levy. Um, so, but I don't believe that actually the report saying that would happen this term, and as you're pointing out, the coalition agreement says it won't. You said the government's due to make its, response, its official formal response in April. Is that going to be early April, mid-April, or late April? <laughs> we haven't confirmed a date in April. Is that because you're leaving yourself a little bit more room in case negotiations go south? It's because there's 30 days in April. Do you have confidence that you, away from political um, considerations, that you have the technical capability of a New Zealand government to actually pass this legislation before the election? Is that a guarantee that any legislation will pass? Uh, absolutely. You know, we've, we've got uh, an incredibly competent staff in the main revenue. They're working uh, very hard on this, and uh, you know, Absolutely, we do have the ability to do. Will we still be a six month um, Senate committee period given there's already been this consultation? There's no intention to change. If there is legislation, there'll be no intention to change the normal Select Committee. It's not process. going to be done through urgency. It's going to go through the proper legislative process if any legislation is required. Why On the farm would, would you use personal income taxation as an um, election year tax bribe? <laughs> Again, Tova, um, you, you, there's some quite pejorative words in your question there. What I'd say is that these are packages. This would be whatever we respond to will be to the whole report. And the report quite clearly offers up um, the option of if there is increased income coming into the government coffers, um, ways that that can be used, including through personal taxation uh, changes. So that's what we now have to work through. I would characterise us as looking at the report and working out what the best package is to fulfil those principles of the fairest possible tax system. On the In the end, you've, got, you've got to remember that we did ask the tax working group to look at the structure, the fairness and the balance of the tax system, which is what they have done. On the farm side of things, New Zealand First has expressed um, kind of interest in carving out exemptions and, and, and various other legislation for, um, for the rural sector, especially around um, workplace legislation. Could you see 
there's some chatter about this happening with us as well. Could you see some kind of exemption being carved out for the rural sector in, in, in this tax plan? Uh, that's not something we've got to yet. Um, I'm not ruling anything in or ruling anything out today. What I would say is again that there is a package here or a series of packages that have been put forward and we have to look at um, what will help us create the fairest possible tax system and what we can generate consensus around. Have you had any meetings with Mr Peters or officials so far on this? Yes, yes. Um, we've had some preliminary discussions at a political level with Mr Peters. Um, Based about on this report? They'd, yeah, yeah, they've been very, very general um, at a level of principle um, and now we're in a position to be able to work through the details. How would you characterise those discussions? Constructive. So when Winston Peters said yesterday to the country that farmers would not be subject to it, was he right or wrong? Well, you can have to ask Mr Peters about what his view is on that, but um, my reading of what I saw there is that he was talking about the very common situation in which farms stay within families and, and they're not sold. If you're saying already that you're highly unlikely to adopt all of the recommendations, are you not getting ahead of yourselves? No, we're just making a general point that the scale of this uh, particular exercise means that getting all of that work what done, getting all of yeah, but getting all of that work done and processed um, in the timelines we've got means that some things won't be there. Mr. Harmon's already pointed out a recommendation that goes against the coalition agreement. We are not going to implement something that goes against the coalition agreement. A lot, of the, a lot of the things that have been um, recommended by this working group spooked you at the last election. Are you brave enough to actually do anything this time? Um, I don't get spooked easily, Jenna. Were you to go for a broad-based capital gains tax, would you go for this one or could there be some version that you come up with yourselves? Oh, th this is what we're working from as a base, um, but I think the chair of the working group's been clear. There are options available to the government to take up aspects of this or, or not. Um, and so we'll use this as the base and have a you know a thorough and wide-ranging discussion. Both, both, you and Ms. both you and Mr Nash are using the word if and you're qualifying the possibility that it was going to be legislation. How much of a political fail will it be if you can't get some legislation through the House this term? Oh, look, uh, we are committed to making sure that we do our best to fulfil uh, the mandate of the group. The groups come back to us and said the tax system by and large works well, but there are gaps and we will do our very best to come up with a package that, uh, that meets those gaps. You are all aware that we operate in an MMP environment. And individual parties' positions going into that are what they are. At the end, we have to work towards consensus. It's my belief that all of the parties have a very constructive view about what we might be able to do here. Do you believe agriculture should be covered in the emissions transition? Well, that's actually part of the agreement um, we signed with New Zealand Foods. Do you believe there's been a change in public appetite over the last, say, five years when it comes to capital gains tax? Um, uh, look, I think people's views on capital gains tax move uh, around a little bit. They move around a lot on the basis of what question you might ask people. If you ask people questions in isolation about a tax, you don't necessarily uh, get the answer that would be the full um, picture that they give. Obviously, issues like the housing market have a role to play with the particular time it's there. Um, so the period of time we've got now is a great one for New Zealanders to engage on the question of what sort of tax system do they want. The other thing also that I've found, and certainly some of the multinational tax measures were put in place, is New Zealanders have an inherent, a inherent sense of fairness. And if they feel that something is unfair, then in a way they look, the, look to the government to remedy that. Do they, if the government comes for their family batches, do they feel like that's fair? Well, again, it's, um, this is something that has to be considered. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But I'll go back to the point where we did ask about the fairness and the balance in the structure. I think the working group has come up with a report that does address those. It's now up to Minister Robinson and myself to take a proposal to Cabinet and uh, for Cabinet to make a decision. Um, I know it's still sort of early days with this, but your initial thoughts, what are you thinking in terms of whether this be applied to all um, assets, you know, excluding family home, or whether to take a more staged approach and, and just um, apply a capital gains tax to one asset group and then extend it to another asset group and so on and so on. Yeah, look, these are the issues that we've got to work through. The working group itself has been clear that it is, um, they're not providing a straitjacket, they're providing an, a series of options that can be picked up and packages that can be put together. Those are the issues we have to now work through. And I, I, one thing, I'd also like to reiterate that the working group did 
recommend that this that any capital gains tax does not apply to personal items like your car, your boat, your jewellery, your art, or things like that. The group is divided on the issue of productivity, um, with um, the capital gains taxes maybe being a hindrance or help to, to productivity. What's your own personal views on capital gains tax and productivity? Well, New Zealand's obviously had challenges around productivity for a very long time in the absence of one, so that would be the first comment that I'd make. Um, you can look overseas to international examples where countries who have capital gains regimes have very good rates of productivity. Um, the groups made some, some comments about that. Um, we'll work our way through those. And on the issue of, um, of fiscal neutrality, uh, if you, if you um, take, uh, adopt the capital gains tax and a few other taxes and then offset those with an income tax bracket change, then you have some form of um, fiscal neutrality, but then you also um, perhaps new to the opportunity of, of, of having fiscal neutrality over the long term going out to 2030 when the tax base roads and costs go up. How do you yourselves perceive fiscal neutrality in the basis of this package? Yeah, I mean, that's one, that's, as we decide where we go with this, that's one of the issues we have to work through. I mean, there's some fairly obvious um, issues. The revenue that's generated by the proposal that the group makes doesn't start to come into a certain point. So if you're going to offset that in other areas of the tax system, you've got to work out how you put those two things together. So that is very much the process. Uh, nothing happens in isolation in government. We accept that. It's one of the reasons why we have to take some of it some time now to look at if we make certain decisions about a tax package, what does that mean in other parts, not only in terms of spending but interaction with welfare and those sorts of issues. So Dr. Collins said that Yes, um, Jason. You've oh. had three goes, we'll let you go. <laughs> um, Dr. Collins um, briefly talked about the timeline of this and said that if the government wanted to have something in place by um, before the next election, it would be quite a tight time constraint. He expected more resources would have to be poured into that, and that would include bringing in overseas experts. Is that do you share this position with him? Uh, yeah, I, I've seen that comment. Um, look, as Minister Nash said just before, we've got a lot of confidence in the Inland Revenue Department. Um, we've got high quality officials in there. It is absolutely true. There's a lot of work to do here, and clearly um, we'll look at the resources IRD needs in order to make sure they can do the work. So you're expecting to bolster that balance sheet a little bit? Um, well, I haven't really got to that point yet, and Mr. Nash will always want me to bolster the balance sheet of IRD. But we also need to understand what we're going to recommend in the first place before we make decisions around resource in regard to IRD and expertise. So will that be part of the government's official response in April, how much more money that you're going to give um, the tax department? Well, the bottom line is, is when we make recommendations to the Cabinet and, what, and, and if they accept those recommendations, then we will look at inland revenues uh, capacity to implement what we require. Mm. And uh, I suspect decisions will be made at that point in time. One of the points that the report makes is um, with the introduction of the capital gains tax, rents will rise. Are you just hurting renters even more? Um, I think I've read the report pretty thoroughly in that regard and there is some modelling that suggests there may be some impacts on rents. Mm -hmm. There's also the lived experience of other jurisdictions where it didn't necessarily have uh, that effect. That's one of the issues that we will have to look at and assess as we go, but I wouldn't say there's any cut and dry view on that. One of the recommendations, or kind of sub-recommendations, involved raising the um, secondary income tax, kind of to compensate if, they, if you took away um, the lowest margin. But they, they uh, McCullum kind of cautioned that he was probably going outside of his remit by recommending that because he specifically said not to raise income taxes. Can you just rule that one out now? Um, so um, we've ruled out increases in income tax as a result of this, um, this work. When you consider this in conjunction with the welfare working group, we, we have to, um, in the context of the fact, of, as I was answering the question before, um, whenever you make changes to the tax system, it has an impact on the welfare system because the two things interact uh, together. From a broader government point of view, um, yes, obviously we'll be thinking about um, how they work together, um, but most especially in this immediate period where decisions that we make will affect um, the opposite system, either the welfare system affecting the tax or the tax affecting welfare, we're certainly looking at that. Do you see it as a big hairy chested report? Um, I see it as, as a report that's done the job that we asked mm -hmm. of it, um, which was to come up with a series of packages. Um, and I think most New Zealanders, when they read this, will see that uh, the groups fulfilled that mandate, that yes, they've given some recommendations about what you could do to expand around capital income, but they've also given recommendations about what that might mean for cuts to 
personal taxes. That sounds to me like exactly the job that we asked of them. Um, I'm not 100% sure what a hairy chested <laughs> package would look like. Do you find it all, at all ironic that one of the first tax legislation pieces that you passed coming into government was to get rid of a personal tax cut of around $520 a week? And now you may be passing a legislation which gives people a personal income tax cut of maybe around $520. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm extremely proud of the legislation that we passed because um, it was what was needed at that point. And I think New Zealanders endorsed that in the election. Uh, just to repeat, one of the main things that we set this group up to do, in addition to fairness, was about balance in the tax system. So if you are going to make decisions like personal income tax cuts, you need to think about balance within the system about where the money for that might come from. And could I also say the second piece of legislation we passed was <laughs> ensuring that multinationals <laughs> paid their fair share. On that, in the press release, um, you've seen about half the entire press release discussing other things that mm. the government's doing outside of a tax working group. Um, Michael Carlin himself described it as a slightly muddy press release. Did you, did you, why was that? Why include all these other things you're doing? You're <laughs> getting, getting, getting really I think Minister Nash is very proud of his work <laughs> program as the Revenue Minister and I think it is also important to recognise that while this report's significant, there are other things going on, including both the legislation Minister Nash mentions that was passed last year around base erosion and profit shifting and the announcement we made on Monday about the discussion document on a digital services tax. Um, Mr Nash has a very busy well, work programme. The other thing I would say is, you know, when we talk about fairness and balance as one of the, uh, the mandates for this group, uh, the work programme is also about bringing fairness and balance to the tax system in a whole lot of other areas, around, you know, multinational taxing, for example. Do you think it's important to protect um, Kiwi savers in this process? Oh, I th what I'd say is that the package, what well, the package that the working groups come up with around Kiwi saver, in fact, would make Kiwi Savers better off, and so this is the party, the Labour Party, that introduced Kiwi Saver. We're very proud of it. We think it's a very important aspect of um, New Zealanders' long-term security, and we're obviously going to continue to protect it. One of the recommendations is congestion charging, and Sir Michael said that. Um, that would have been a better move than the regional fuel tax. <laughs> what do you think? Um, well, no, we've done the regional fuel tax and I certainly support that. Um, the work on congestion charging in New Zealand was, was started by um, someone named Simon Bridges mm. and it's actually a very interesting piece of work in terms particularly of the city of Auckland where obviously you know you have significant issues around congestion. Um, work is ongoing on that uh, but I'd say that's some time off from being, uh, being so, able to be implemented. So Aucklanders could have the regional fuel tax and a congestion charge. Uh, yeah, well that would be the question you'd ask, isn't it? So we're not in anywhere near the question of implementing a congestion charge. I'm just telling you that the work that was started on that is, uh, was done by Simon Bridges. If you, were, if you were to introduce a congestion charge, would you scrap the regional fuel tax? Um, we're not proposing to introduce a congestion charge at this time, and if we ever did, we would look at... But you've been we would look at the. We would look at the balance of taxation um, that New Zealanders face and, and make decisions at that point, but we're not at this point anywhere near that. And I don't think it's recommended. I think it's recommended that we look at it as opposed to recommending it out. Everything in the report is recommended that you look at it. Some things are more specific than others. You both wrote to the working group uh, asking specifically to consider a, a tax free threshold for small businesses on capital gains. Mm. Uh, Sir Michael said today, not a good idea. That would introduce distortions and so on, uh, is that the end of that idea? Look, like all of the of the recommendations, both positive and negative, we'll take a look at it and, and see where that sits for us, um, but we haven't made any calls on that. Which parts of the report surprised you the most? Um, no, I'm, I'm not sure that any of it particularly surprised me. I think one of the really important um, things that I saw in the report is the which people in New Zealand would be impacted mm. by um, a regime on capital gains and capital income, which clearly are those in the highest decile, dramatically so. Um, that's something that I think is worth pondering on when we talk about questions of fairness and balance. Stuart Nash, do you have an answer for that? Uh, you know, one of the stats is that 20% of New Zealanders own 84% of the assets. And uh, you know, when we are talking about fairness and balance in the tax system, I think uh, we are hoping to the whole country to look at this and, uh, and work in a way that, does, you know, that works for everyone. You when, you look, when you look at the timing of how uh, everything interacts to become revenue neutral, um, a lot of the yep. capital gains income won't come through. Will you still offer those tax cuts really early on if you don't have the money? 
<laughs> way out here. We'll always make sure everything balances up in the books. But that's a, precisely one of the questions that we've got to work through because if we if we did decide to go down that kind of regime, we would then have to work out the flow of income. Mm. Um, clearly, it's a possible for the government to make additional decisions as well but as you're pointing out they have revenue impacts and um, the Minister of Finance always makes sure that the books balance and politically up. politically you're going to offer up a tax cut anyway. Yeah, you're just getting a long way ahead of So Michael was really suggesting that you would be influenced by the ballot box. Well that's to Michael's view. Um, we're influenced what, by what's the best thing for New Zealand and the best outcome for a fair and balanced tax decision. Folks I'm going to have to... Minister, the uh, statisticians tell us today that labour productivity has declined for the second year in a row from Slovakian levels uh, and given that part of the explanation of that has to be the capital shallowness of our business sector, why would you even contemplate taxing the returns to business investment harder than the yeah. They already are. I, I, I did really answer this question before. Um, New Zealand has struggled with labour productivity in the absence mm -hmm. of this. Other countries uh, that have uh, these kinds of regimes have high levels of labour productivity. So I'm gonna, not going to make that correlation. Um, we are very committed to making sure that we help improve um, access to capital for businesses, but all of that will be worked through.